Hello everybody. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Riley. I'm a full-time reseller. I resell anything and everything on Poshmark, eBay, and Etsy. This is just a clothing haul, as you can tell by the title. I spent about $300 over the past week at a few different thrift stops. This is a bigger haul than I usually have to show you guys. It's actually so big that I ran out of hangers for one, and my inventory processing rack is actually warping down the center from all of the weight. So I really have to get this stuff processed before this thing snaps on me. Um, I don't have time for a really extensive intro, so I'm going to cut to the chase with this one. It's probably gonna be one of my longer hauls, so I'm, I'm not gonna go into too much detail with each piece. This is Hortensia. So I've never actually heard of this brand before, but what got me looking into this jacket is the fact that, well, it feels good for one. For two, it has merino wool blend and it's made in Italy. There's a lot of brands, believe it or not, that are made in Italy that are not worth reselling. Um, I know it's easy to see made in Italy and instantly think it's worth something, but that's not always the case. This one, I could not find that much info on the brand. So I looked up Hortensia Italy on eBay and I couldn't really find any comps. However, there looks to be an Hortensia brand that's sold in somewhere in Europe. Um, I don't really know if this is going to be worth selling, uh, but I am taking my chances with it because I paid $3.99 for it, and I think it's pretty cute. We'll see. This may be a this may be a dud. I don't know. If anybody knows anything about the brand, let me know down below in the comments because I couldn't find much about it. This is a peck and peck top. So I find quite a bit of peck and peck. I usually leave it behind. I have moved a couple of their pieces, but the only pieces that I've moved are the pieces that have really bright in-your-face patterns. Obviously, this is one of them. I actually found this exact same top sold on eBay around $25, so I took my chances with it. I'm going to try to sell it around $25 as well. Peck and Peck is a good brand to pick up if it's one of the newer pieces, and it has, like I said, a really loud pattern. It seems like those do pretty well. The older pieces are kind of a dime a dozen, so I don't really pick those up. This is a vintage 1990s single stitch. If you guys can see this, just one single stitch down the sleeve instead of two. Um, 1990s Florida Gators, which I think is a college football team. I think it's college. Uh, Florida Gators top. I, I have a lot of 90s tees that I'm sitting on around $20, the 90s graphic tees. They're not like super rare. It's not, I mean, they had so many graphic tees in the 90s. Um, but sports teams, band tees, stuff like that, those I price a little bit higher than 20 because this is a sports team. I'm going to list it closer to 30. This is Tiny, which I think is an anthropology brand, but I don't think, I don't think it's anthropology exclusive. It's a tiny dress. Um, I've actually never found a dress from Tiny before. However, their button up blouses, which is what I've always found <laughs> from them sell well around 20 to $25 depending on the piece. Because this one's a dress, I'm going to list it closer to 35 or 40. Um, it's in excellent condition and Tiny sells pretty quickly for me. It gets a lot of attention over on Poshmark. This is a vintage Cracker Barrel. I didn't know Cracker Barrel ever made clothing. Cowboy cowgirl shirt. Um, I picked this one up because of the style alone, not just because it's vintage. I think I'm going to list this one around 25 but I have to look this up because there's probably, I mean, obviously this was mass produced, so there might be plenty more. It might be saturated. I thought it was cute, so I didn't even bother looking up comps in the store. This is Duluth Trading Company, which is a higher end outdoors brand that sells pretty well for me. Um, I usually sell their button ups, their flannels, stuff like that. Their pants sell well for me. I don't pick up their plain pieces. This is a little plain for my liking, but it's like a merino wool blend sweater th sweater so I think I'll be able to get about 25 out of that one this is a new label cavi elephant pattern top um I have to look up this exact style number with cavi you can find the exact style you can find tons of stock images on google which is nice because then I can um I can put the style name in my listing that'll be a good tag word I have to look up the style to see what it sells for I'm thinking between 20 and 25 dollars I do want to say this before it leaves my train of thought. On every haul video, I always have a couple of comments, um, not bad, but I always have a couple of comments that say that I'm um, pricing things too low or I'm estimating them too low. Some people even say, you know, that ruins the market for the rest of us because you're pricing them too low, you're decreasing the value of the brand. 
I, what I tell you guys over my videos is a general estimate. I don't really get the exact number until I go to list it and look up the comps on my phone while, like right before I list it. I always like to shoot a little bit lower on my YouTube videos just because I do not want somebody who's new to reselling or looking, coming to my video to be educated on a brand. I don't want to set their expectations higher for the brand than what it's actually worth. I don't want to tell somebody that new label Kabi is worth $50 just because I have one special piece. Um, I like to be more realistic and I'm really conservative on the pricing estimates on my YouTube videos just because I do not want to lead people in the wrong direction thinking that certain brands are worth more than what they're actually worth because where I live, our thrift store prices are pretty low. I've been thrifting in a plenty of states and Michigan has very reasonable thrift store prices. Um, I do not want people paying up for brands that I'm overestimating the value of. so. Please keep that in mind. I'm not like purposely trying to undercut anybody else's prices. Um, I understand how the market works. I'm just, I'm conservative with my price estimations because I don't want to lead anybody in the wrong direction. I probably should have said that at the beginning, but it just crossed my mind. This is Holding Horses, which I've actually had good luck with. Um, some of their comps on eBay are, are not that great, like 10 or $12 for a nice button up, but I haven't had a problem moving them. This is a dress, so I think I'm going to list it closer to $30. I have to look up the style number, though, because I do think this is Holding Horse's newer label. Um, I might be able to get more out of it. We'll see. This is Urban Renewal by Urban Outfitters. So I looked this up. I actually had no idea that Urban Outfitters even had this branch of clothing. The comps were really good. Anywhere between like $20 and $60. I know that's a really broad range. I think this one's I'll be able to sell for closer to $40 or $50 because it's just a nice thick sweater. It's in really nice condition. I don't know much about Urban Renewal, but what it looks like is that it's actually recycled, repurposed clothing that's like mass produced. I don't, I don't know. I could be totally wrong, but if so, that's really cool. This is Sundance. This is just a regular bright white top with a little bit of mesh. I don't have a problem moving Sundance. This is a really simple piece, so I think I'll list it closer to $17 or $18 over on eBay. This is, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Libertine for Target. This looks like it's older, like an older label because I've sold Libertine before. I don't think anything specifically for Target has like a great resell rate because um, I leave behind a lot of like higher end for Target brands because I just have a problem moving them, even Lily Pulitzer are for Target. However, I really like this style because it reminds me of like Victorian Revival and I feel like, I don't know, I feel like the style alone combined with the brand, I think I could probably get like $24 out of this piece. We'll see. This is 360 sweater, which is from 360 Cashmere. I'm really hoping when I look back on this video that it's not blurring out the labels as I hold them close to the camera. Um, 360 sweater is obviously worth a little bit less generally than 360 cashmere because you guessed it it's not actually made of cashmere most of the time however 360 sweater does move well for me around 20 to 27 dollars depending on the piece i think i'll list this one closer to like 23 or 24. this is an eileen fisher top super simple linen top i almost never leave newer label eileen fisher behind i think i will list this piece around this one's probably going to be closer to 30 to start off with because it's a nice new label and this is in like excellent condition. We'll see. I might be shooting a little too high because sometimes I sit on Eileen Fisher for too long. I have a love-hate relationship with this brand. W118 by Walter Baker. I found a few of their dresses. I was under the impression when I first started reselling that this brand was worth more than what it actually is. I think it retails for quite a bit, um, but the resale values. I sat on a couple of her dresses. I ended up having to bring them to a consignment shop because I could not move them. They got a lot of attention, but I could not move them. So I wasn't going to pick up their pieces anymore, but I really, really like this top. And I don't know why, because it's actually not my style at all, but I just feel like it's going to sell. So we'll see. I'm going to start at around $20 to be reasonable because like I said, the brand doesn't move that well. This is a new to me brand. It's called The Art of Cloth. And when I first saw this, I actually completely passed it. Like I noted the brand for two seconds because I've never heard of it. And then I kept going through the dresses and like 17 dresses later, I'm like, I should comp search that one dress that I saw. 
So I'm really glad I did because the comps are really good. You guys can see this like little bit of green dye at the bottom. Um, I don't know anything about the brand other than the comps were great. I think I can get about $40 for this. This is another brand that I've never heard of. I actually didn't even look up comps, so this could be worth absolutely nothing. But I like it nonetheless. It's it's kind of hard to see, but Prontomoda Geisy. Prontomoda Geisy. I know I'm butchering the shit out of that. I just know it, so I don't... I know people are going to correct me on that. Um, it's a silk blend top. It's made in Italy. I did the mistake of just automatically throwing it in my cart thinking it's worth the risk. I still have not comp searched that. Honestly, if this isn't worth anything, I'm going to wear it myself because it's cute. This is Cloth and Stone, which I know a handful of you guys who are regulars to my videos are, are going to hate me for this because <laughs> every time I pick up this brand, I'm like never picking that up again. But this is actually a rayon. So usually when I get Cloth and Stone, it's cotton or chambray or plaid flannel. This is a rayon blouse. I think I'm going to list this one around 18 to 22. We'll see. Uh, I'm probably going to sit on it for a while like I usually do with cloth and stone. I it's, it's my weakness. I know the brand sits for a long time, but I, I keep picking it up. This is Weekend by Max Mara, which is a higher end brand to pick up. Obviously, the Weekend is the lower end label from that designer. Um, kind of like a cute picnic -y dress. I don't know if this is vintage. I feel like this is vintage. Or older, at least, because style alone. I don't know what I'm going to list this at. I've sold two Weekend by Max Mara pieces and I sold one for like 20 and the other one for 30. Because this one's a dress, I'm going to shoot a little bit higher, maybe around 40 or 50, but we'll see. This is a Paige top. I did not know that Paige the label made tops. I thought they only made jeans, but it makes sense. I think I'm going to list this one around 18. It's nothing special. Honestly, I don't even know if Paige tops are really worth picking up because I know Sometimes I leave their pants behind because it's not really worth it. Um, I want to try my hand out with the tops and see if it gets any attention. This is Bowden, a Bowden pattern dress. So I was really surprised to see when I did my pass or purchase game. Well, I've done a few of them and I've actually found Bowden in the game. A lot of other resellers passed on Bowden um, given the opportunity during my game. Which is shocking because I thought Bowdoin was something that most resellers picked up. But, more for me. Um, I actually don't have a problem moving Bowdoin if it has a pattern. I, I shoot lower. Like, I don't expect to get a lot out of it. For this dress, I'll probably list around 27 and see what happens. If I have to price drop it, no big deal. Because I paid $5.99 for it. This is a newer label, People Like Frank set. So I paid $3.99 for the cardigan and the tank top that goes with it. They're actually two separate pieces obviously. Um, people like Frank is a good brand to pick up, especially their newer labels. I think I'm going to list this piece around 40 because it has two pieces with it, but we'll see. I have to comp search. I also found a lot of anthropology pieces at this one stop, which I've been kind of, I don't get as excited about anthropology hauls as I used to because like I say with everything, I do sit on them for longer than I used to like two and a half years ago. Which is fine because I'm more picky about what I pick up, but still. This is a knitted and knotted. So knitted and knotted labels actually remind me of the BKE gimmicks, I think it is. Where it's just a little tiny charm. I almost passed on this piece because I thought it was a BKE gimmicks. And then I I had just a revelation a couple racks down and I'm like, was that knitted and knotted? And I'm glad I double checked because it is. Um, I think I'm going to list this piece around 25 Here's another knitted and knotted. This is all from the same haul. You guys can see the little charm. This piece I'm going to list for a little bit more because it's better fabric. I think this one's like a cashmere blend or something. Merino wool, cashmere, something like that. Um, and I just like this piece better because cardigans sell for a little bit more for me than sweaters when it comes to brands like knitted and knotted. So yeah, I think I'll list that one around 28 or 30. This one is boggling me, but I picked it up regardless of not knowing the brand. This is the little size tag. So if any of you recognize this size tag and can actually pin it to a brand, let me know. This was in the same haul that I found all this other anthropology stuff and it was the same size. So I had a feeling because I actually like the quality and the design of this. It reminds me of anthropology. So I looked at the RN and it's the famous 66170 RN, which is an anthropology RN. However, I don't know what brand it is. I know it's anthropology something. 
but so if any of you guys can pin this label or this size tag label to a brand let me know because I have no other way of finding it out even if I don't find out the brand I can list it on Poshmark as anthropology because it is and I can probably move it around 20 bucks this is something I probably shouldn't have picked up Lafayette 148 it's just a, that's a newer label though but it is just a regular linen solid color top I always tell you guys when it comes to brands that aren't like Eileen Fisher which are known for solid colors I try not to pick them up anymore. They're just harder to move. They don't have anything that sells them because it's just a solid color. Um, in Lafayette 148, even though it retails for a lot, it's I just I don't get that much for it. So I think I'm gonna list this one around $17 and see what happens. But I don't know. I might have to just take one for the team and sell it for like 15 bucks with free shipping. This is Clara Sun Woo. I don't know much about this brand. However, the comps were pretty good. Some are all over the place. Some are lower than, you know, what I'd expect. But nonetheless, I think I could get like 25, maybe a little bit more, maybe like $30 out of this top. We'll see. This one's cool. This is an IRO, which I've heard of the brand before, but I do not remember ever finding it or looking into it other than like maybe seeing it on my Instagram feed. Had a good feeling about this. Looked up the comps, and for whatever reason, this brand IRO has a pretty good resale rate. I think I, I think I'll list this around sixty bucks, because it is like a blazer jacket. But we will see. Like I said, these are all estimates, guys. Either way, IRO that's definitely a brand worth looking into if you find it. This is a vintage Kooji 1990s sweater dress, and it has the famous, um, very identifiable Kooji sweater texture on it i found this exact same dress that sold for 60 bucks on ebay so i'm going to list mine around the same price this is an athleta newer label which i'm going to show you guys it doesn't say athleta anywhere it just has a bunch of these little starburst athleta um, logos all over the label and then obviously when you go to look at the material you see the athleta rn um i do not know what size this is though i think the size thing got pulled off Regardless, I think I'm going to list this around $25. I feel like it's an oversized fit, which is popular right now. I found a lot of Athleta, and I left a lot of it behind, but I also brought a lot of it home. It was about 50-50. This is a brand that I promised myself two years ago I would never pick up again, and I actually did good. I didn't pick it up for about two years. <laughs> BCBG Max Azria. So even though it is technically a high-end brand, if you go to their website, their stuff's expensive. Um, however, it's so saturated on the resale market and pretty much every time I go into a thrift shop, I find a BC BG Max Azria coat, a Max Azria dress. Like I find it a lot, so it's not worth picking up at all. But this piece I picked up because of the style alone. Even if this would have been like loft, I think I would have picked this up. Um, it's just an open knit like crochet rust brown colored duster. I think I'm going to list this piece around 30 because of the style. Ooh, had to take a deep breath. My hauls are not normally this long. Uh, this is a White and Warren, which is a pretty good brand. I've sold a couple of their cashmere, cashmere pieces. They have a lot. I think they're more known for their cashmere. This is not cashmere, um, but I did pick it up because it's a cute jacket. I think I'll be able to get about $30 out of this, maybe closer to $40. Some White and Warren pieces sell on eBay for like 5 bucks. Like not even worth it. But their cashmere pieces, their thick jackets and stuff like that sell well. This is a newer label Bowden. Uh, embroidered, like, contrast color dress. I usually don't pick up Bowden unless it's patterned, but this little embroidered accent cuts it for me. I think I'll list this piece around 25 This is a new label Kabi pattern dress. I really like this pattern. It reminds me of, like, the 70s. I have to look up the style again. I think I'll be able to get about 25 or 30 out of it. We'll see. This is one of my favorite pieces and the brand isn't anything special either. Lelise. Um, I find this brand quite a bit now. It's something that I used to think was worth more than what it was. I actually found out the hard way uh, because I sold one of their pieces like right away for like 25 bucks. So I started picking it up after that and then it really just slowed down for me. However, this is a dress. Like this is a button up duster dress. Oh, it's not a dress actually it is a duster i didn't even realize it's split down there that's so cool i love this pattern i love the fact that it's just a long button-up duster i think i'll be able to get 30 dollars out of this piece do have to look up the comps 
Lalise is a good brand if you're finding special pieces. Um, it's just not something I pick up all the time. This is a really cool authentic, authentic vintage 1960s, late 1960s baby doll dress. Um, you can just tell by the stitching on the inside, the hem, and the clasp and zipper. That's how I tell. When I first saw this, I thought for sure it was like a reproduction or something because it's like in excellent condition. This feels like it was never washed. There's no fading to the color. This is a really hard color to keep bright, and it's bright in your face. I think I'm going to list this piece around $50. I think I will... I think I'll list it on Poshmark and Etsy. I think it'll get a little bit more attention over on Etsy though. Because the special vintage pieces like that with those bright paisley patterns are really popular over on Etsy. Um, this is a Madewell sweater. I sit on Madewell sweaters around 20 bucks. Every once in a while I'll sell one and I'm happy. This one I'm probably going to list around $20 as well. Nothing special, but Madewell sweaters do sell. It's just not something that's out the door for 20 bucks every time. This is Maeve. I find Maeve dresses quite a bit, and honestly, I don't sell them for that much. I think I'll be able to get like $25 out of this. Um, I know some of you are going to say you're underpricing it, because you can go on eBay and look up comps, and there are going to be some Maeve dresses that sold for like 50 bucks. but I just, I don't sell them for that much. They do not move for me unless I price them around $20 to $25. This is one of my bread and butter brands very loyal to this brand. Logo, lounge, logo by Lori Goldstein. Boring in the front, party in the back. Not really, it's just lace. But logo and logo lounge sells well for me if it's nice, clean, um, almost excellent condition. If it's even slightly used, it's not worth picking up because the brand is like a QVC brand. It doesn't retail for much, but people will look. It just people will rebuy the brand for 50% off or 50% of its retail value um, just because they love the brand, um, which most brands, you know, you guys know, as soon as you walk out of the store with it, it loses like 70% of its resale value. So logo, it's just, I'm loyal to the brand. Um, thanks to the followers. This is Maeve by Anthropology. This one, this Maeve dress, I will sell for a little bit higher. I think I'll list this one around 30 or 35 because of the pattern. I think this is a wool blend. I'm just guessing this is a wool blend. Actually, let's see how accurate I am. It's rayon and polyester and nylon. So that's embarrassing because I'm totally off there. However, it, it feels like wool, okay? Um, this pattern is gonna sell the bad boy. So yeah, 35, 40 bucks for that. This is Ibex, I-B-E-X, which the art of wool, they make their clothing out of wool. Um, it doesn't feel like, I mean, it feels like wool, but it's just lightweight. feels feels like rayon. It's really rayon or linen. Um, I love Ibex, and it moves quickly for me. I'm not sitting on any Ibex pieces right now. I'm going to list that around 25 bucks. This I picked up because it's new with tags. I'm a sucker for mud pie. I loved mud pie um, when I was younger. They didn't start making clothing that I know of until a few years ago, but I loved their crazy, like, quirky pieces and picture frames and stuff. This I picked up because, like I said, it's new with tags, and I actually like the, I actually like the little tassel design. I'm gonna list this piece around 20 bucks, maybe a little bit more. We'll see. They had a couple of brand new with tags mud pie pieces, but for whatever reason, the other pieces were priced at like 10 dollars, and this one I got at regular price. So I don't know if the price people didn't realize it was new or not, or they just skipped past that one. I don't know. This is Michael Tyler, which is a good brand to pick up. The comps are pretty good. I think he's known for his crazy abs. I wouldn't call this abstract. Maybe we'll call it abstract. For his crazy patterns. Um, comps are all over the place. Some are really good. Some are decent. I think I'll list this one around $28 and see what happens over on eBay. This is a Kavu. Kavu. Jacket. This reminds me of a Carhartt. Like, exactly like a Carhartt. But it's Kavu. It's got some cat hair on it. So I gotta, I have to take a lint roller to this piece. Freshen it up a bit which I haven't done with anything yet. I haven't even steamed anything yet. Um, I think I'll be able to get about $30 out of this piece. I do think I found the exact same jacket on eBay that sold between $30 and $35. Um, I remember comp searching that one pretty decently because I've been leaving Kavu behind lately. Just because they've been overpricing it for some reason at my Goodwill, I think, you know, they got the hang of it thinking that it's like, you know, North Face. My Goodwill always prices North Face a little bit higher because it sells around here really quickly. Um, this is also a new to me brand. It's called She, okay, I'm just 
Should I even say it and embarrass myself like that? Chiar, Chiaramente, Chiarment, Chiarment, I don't know, made in Italy. See, I told you guys at the very beginning of the video, don't put your money on something just because it's made in Italy. And what did I do? I pick up two brands I know nothing about that are made in Italy. Three brands. Um, this one's a merino wool blend with cat, like merino wool cashmere or something like that. Um, so I looked up the brand. It was one of those where I didn't find a lot of comps on eBay, but I figured I'd take my chances. Um, it's just, it feels like nice quality. So I don't know much about the brand. I don't know enough to tell you guys. I should have done more research before I included that in the video. We'll see if anybody knows anything about that brand. Let me know down in the comments, please. And thank you. This is a moth. There's the moth label. Moth has a cult-like following. Moth sells really well for me. I don't price it that high. It moves quick, around $25 to $30. This piece I'm going to move around, this piece I'm going to price around $30. Um, just because I really like it. I think the style, I think the style gives it a little extra, gives it some extra pennies. This is, oh, I found two Burberry pieces. I should have said that at the beginning. Um, Burberry Brit. So obviously super simple top. It has the Burberry plaid down at the sleeves. Um, probably going to list this piece around like 40 bucks. I know some people are like, that's low. And some people are going to say that's high because it's Brit. Um, I move simple Burberry pieces around 30 to $40. I've sold two Burberry tops before. One was for like 30 and one was for like 38 uh, and they were just a solid color with like one tiny little Burberry plaid. The more Burberry um, plaid, like the more logo on any designer, really, honestly, unfortunately, the better it sells for me. So if it was like plastered in the Burberry classic plaid, I'd list it at 100. I honestly would. My son just barged in down here and daddy had to bring him back upstairs. <laughs> he wanted to show me something. Um, this is in Cashmere, which is another new to me brand. Anything that has cashmere in the label, I look up. Um, the comps were pretty good on this. I think I can get about $30 out of this piece. It has some cute buttons down the side. It doesn't even feel like this was ever even washed. So, I don't know. It's like almost new, it feels like. We're really making a dent in my haul. <laughs> so that's good. This is another Moth by Anthropology piece. I think I'm going to list this one around $30 as well because it is oversized. Ugh. This whole thing's going to snap on me. This is a new to me brand. Okay. Murmur. New to me. Um, I actually didn't even look this up because I didn't think it was anything special. And then I, this happens a lot. I will pass a brand. I will note it in my mind and then I'll go back to it a few minutes later because it bugs me. And I'm glad I, I'm glad it bothered me because it seems like a pretty good brand as far as comps go. I think I'll be able to get like 25 out of this. I don't know if it's like an outdoorsy brand. I don't know what's up, but comps were good. This is another new label copy top. Cute little pattern. These are actually not patterned on. These are like embroidered, which is cute. I think I'll list this one around 25 to 30, depending. I have to look up the style, but I have a good feeling about this one because of all the embroidered little daisies or whatever they are. They're not daisies. Um, this is Saw Surroundings. This is one of, this is another one of my brands that I'm just really loyal to. A lot of resellers I learned through pass or purchase don't pick up sauce roundings, which like I said, more for me, so I don't care. Um, it sells around $20 to $25. Some pieces I sell for $18, which I'm still making, you know, a $10 profit there on each piece. This one um, is the Velvet. The Velvet soft surroundings sell well for me. I've sold Velvet in the past around $25, and it was actually slightly damaged, so I'm going to list this one around $30. This one's cool. I've always wanted to find this brand, and now that I did... I was underwhelmed when I looked up the comps. 3.1, um, Philip Leem, Philip Lim, whatever. I always get corrected and people think I'm so undereducated and I don't know what I'm doing, but I don't hear the brands. I read the brands. Uh, this is like a sweater dress. Uh, it's a really good brand. It's definitely worth picking up. However, I was underwhelmed when I looked at the comps because I've always wanted to find this brand. Now that I did, like, I was just expecting more. I think I'll be able to list that and sell it around $30. This is Diletta, which is another anthropology brand. Not sure if it's anthro exclusive. This one's just a really simple, like, almost peplum top, but not really. Uh, this brand has a cult-like following. Um, kind of like knitted and knotted moth. 
soft surroundings, those other brands that I picked up. It's a nice simple piece. I think I'll be able to get $18 out of it. Here we go again. Here's my other Burberry. Burberry Brit. Same, obviously same haul. I um I think I'll be able to get about $35 out of this one. Unfortunately, there's not like a Burberry logo or the Burberry plaid anywhere. So not going to expect that much out of it. And you guys have to remember the Burberry Brit is like a lower line of Burberry. This is Sacred Threads, which is a really good brand for me. Sells pretty well. Um, I didn't know that they made blazers and jackets and stuff. Everything that I've seen by them is like a really boho dress, like crazy hippie style uh, tunic. So the fact that they made something that's kind of like business casual is shocking. But nonetheless, I think I'll be able to get like $30 or $35 out of this. This piece is really cool. A Y2K Harley Davidson from Fargo. Um, anyway, Harley Davidson Y2K, really freaking awesome top. I think this will sell around $40 because it's just, it's iconically early 2000s. Like when you think of early 2000s, like top of the line fashion, street fashion, whatever you want to call it, this is what you think of. So yeah, I think that one will do good around $40. This is actually a set in this already fall off the hanger. It's Lafayette 148, which I already told you guys a few minutes ago how I feel about this brand. It retails for a lot. It's a higher end brand, but resale, it's not what you'd expect. Um, because this is a whole set, I think I'll be able to get like $60 out of this. We'll see. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Nothing special, it's just a really solid color, like almost dark eggplant purple, which might be hard to tell in the video. This is just an athleta dress. I've actually sold this exact same style dress in a different color and size before, around 25 bucks. So I'm gonna list this one for the same price. This is an athleta jacket, a really long jacket. Um, I think I'll list this piece around $40 because nice heavy wool jackets like this that are hooded and long what do you call these do you call these dusters too pea coats whatever you want to call them they sell well for me so yeah this one around 40 bucks this is diane von furstenberg really nice bright color dress i think i'm going to list this one around 40 or 50 because of the pattern this just like lafayette 148 um it's a high-end designer it retails for a lot but the resale price is not what you'd think it would be unfortunately. Here's another logo. So this is just logo by Lori Goldstein. Um, not the lounge line. This piece, I think I'll be able to sell for 25 because of the pattern. Her pattern pieces do better for me. Her florals do better for me than like her stripes, uh, which I think that's the case with most brands. This is a Sundance top, another very basic top. I think I'll list this one around $20. It's bright white and it has like no signs of wear, which is great. And hard to find with bright white. I'm going to show you guys these both at once because they're the same style. These are both Athleta. This label's always folded inward. Athleta cardigans, they were right next to each other. I grabbed them both. They're not like a special fabric or anything. I just think they're a cotton blend. But yeah, these are dusters, right? But I think I'll be able to get about $27 a piece for these. I was going to sell them in a lot, but I honestly think they'll do better by themselves. This is a soft surroundings top, nothing special, but it's in like excellent condition. So I'll list this one around 20 bucks. Nothing special, no special pattern. This is a logo, Lori Goldstein stripe top, which I was just telling you guys about. Um, this one I think I'll list for about $18. I do think around $18 it'll move pretty quickly, even though it's pretty basic. Oh, and then, so I took a gamble with these. Um, these are all older labels of free people. Check this out. This is one label, free people. This is another label, free people. And this is yet another label, free people. These were all from the same stop. So I know older label, free people does not do that well. Even new label, free people doesn't really sell for as much as it used to for me at least. But I have read somewhere through the grapevine of Instagram that there are certain free people thermals sell well so i know there's like one specific style of free people thermal that is rare and sought after and it sells for like 70 bucks 
I do not believe these are either one of those. However, I'm going to try my hand at it um, because I'm going to look up these styles, see if free people thermals are worth anything. Either way, even though they're older labels, I do think I'll be able to move them because they're not outdated. I mean, you could call them outdated, I guess. But to me, like, the styles are still trendy. Like, I could still see something like this being sold at the mall today. So we'll see. I might get really lucky with those and I might not. Now we're moving on to the pants. These are Lucy athletic pants. Um, Lucy sells well for me, even their plain pieces. These are just, I don't even know what kind of, they feel like scrubs. Um, I think I'll list these pants around $27 because they are, they're different. They're not just plain black leggings like I usually find. These are just a pair of Vineyard Vine shorts. I pick up Vineyard Vines all the time. I personally like the brand for myself. These won't fit me. They won't squeeze on me even if I tried. Um, because they're just shorts, I think I'll list them around like 17 bucks with free shipping. Oh no. Oh, this one's really cool. This is probably my favorite bottom. This is a Madewell skirt, like a really long midi skirt. Chambray, obviously. I think I'll be able to get like 30 bucks out of this. I really, really like this style. This is a pair of Pilcro and the letterpress pants. These are not jeans. These are like stretchy pants. They were actually in the legging section, um, but they're in like excellent condition. I think I'll be able to get about $27 out of these ones as well. I feel like $27 is my sweet spot number because if I do 30, I sit on them, but I usually want a couple more dollars than 25. So 27 is like the perfect, perfect number. This is a seven for all mankind. So I think this is their newer label. Uh, I find Seven for All Mankind a lot. They're obviously really, really popular. I only pick up certain styles like A Pocket, obviously Dojo, um, Guinevere or Guinevere or whatever the name is. This one doesn't have a style name, but I think that's their newer label. So I'm going to try to get like 20 or 25 bucks out of these. They're plain black, which unfortunately I sit on plain black pants longer, but didn't want to leave them behind. This is... I hate selling colored jeans because I sit on them longer, but I picked it up anyway. It's DL 1961. This is, I think, their newer label. You guys can see just by looking at the label. This is in, like excellent condition though. I'm going to try listing these around 24, see what happens. Um, DL 1961 actually sells better for me on eBay than Poshmark. This is a pair of cut from cloth pants. I picked these ones up because they're Natalie high rise boot. They're not like seven fam dojos or anything, but I think I'll be able to get about $20 out of these. It's one of their newer pieces, a newer label. This is AG, Adriano Goldschmied. Goldschmied. Um, I pick AG jeans up quite a bit. Some of them I sit on, uh, some of them I move right away. I'm going to list these at $24 and see what happens. It's definitely a good brand of jean to pick up. I just, I don't know why some pieces I sit on longer than others. This is actually my last piece to show you guys. These are really cool. Okay. Sizzle. That's actually not the brand though. Okay, wait. Sizzle, Division of Michael Scott. So these are really killer early 1990s, like iconic pants. Um, sizzle. I have to look up comps on these, but I have a good feeling about them. I feel like I'll be able to get like 40, maybe 50 bucks out of them. I actually haven't looked up comps. I just, as soon as I saw these and I realized that they were true vintage, I knew I was taking them home. Um, I have just a couple of accessories to show you guys and then I can actually wrap this up. So I found these Stuart Weitzman heels. The style is a little, it's a little out there. These aren't vintage, um, but they're in really nice condition. Stuart Weitzman heels are a hit or miss. They're vintage ones sell for around $25. So nothing special, even though they're hundreds of dollars new. Um, and these are actually coach driving shoes. So they're pretty, pretty, pretty um, worn down. As you guys can see, there used to be like little nubs here for traction. Uh, even the leather label on the inside is worn down, but they're very clean. They're very buttery soft. You can still see the coach label in the back and obviously on the bottom as well. I do not know what comps are in coach driving shoes. I mean, they are in good condition. The bottom's just, you know, a little worn down. I'm thinking I'll be able to get like 30 bucks out of these, but we'll see. And then I found this Kate Spade bag. 
Um, it is authentic. It's just, I think this is one of her Kate Spade outlet pieces. I think. Maybe not. Um, either way, it was $3. It's just a simple crossbody. I'll probably list it around $25 to $30 and see what happens. And I also have this, I think vintage, um, Dooney and Burke rainbow zipper bag. As you guys can see, the teeth on this zipper are rainbow, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, it is authentic Dooney and Burke. Unfortunately, um, there are like little bubbles up under the leather because this is one of those weird like wax coated leathers. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I couldn't, there, there's no way to get these out. They're not stains. They're just little bubbles where the leather separated from the, um, from the top layer of this waxy coat, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because of the little bubbles everywhere, I'm not going to get as much for this as I'd like to. I'm thinking I'll list it around like $25 or $30. I have to look up the style. But regardless, um, that's my haul. So this was probably a really long video. I'm going to wrap this video up, you guys, because I have a lot of stuff to list. This is going to take me like three days. Um, lots of dedication, lots of processing, lots of steaming. You get it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to leave a link down below in the description to my Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Happy selling, happy thrifting, and stay safe.